As someone who's interested in becoming a sports medicine physician, I was surprised as to how many ways there actually are to get to the same end goal. This is something I wish I knew when I was going into medical school, and so my goal in this video is to explain all the different paths that someone can take to becoming a sports medicine physician. Also, for those of you that are new here, my name is Dr. Adam Nessum, and as I'm recording this video, I'm currently halfway through my intern year, and I'll be pursuing a PM&R residency with hopes of matching into sports medicine. So the first decision you need to make when deciding what type of sports medicine doctor you want to be is if you want to go a surgical route or a non-surgical route. Originally, I had only thought that you can be a sports medicine doctor if you do it out of orthopedic surgery. Now, this requires a five-year orthopedic surgery residency and then one year of sports medicine fellowship. However, there are actually more ways to be a non-operative sports medicine doctor than there are to be an operative one. After doing my rotations, I learned that while I liked being in the operating room, it was not something I absolutely loved, and I could tell that other peers of mine, the residents or even the attendings, would get more into a flow state in the OR. Now, I know that people may say that this is because I was not the one doing the actual operations, and then it gets better once you're doing more than holding a retractor in surgery as the medical student. But I still felt like if I was going to put myself through a surgical residency, I should feel more excited to be in the OR than I was. This was a decision that was hard to come to terms with because I was always thinking that I would be an orthopedic surgeon in medical school. Luckily, I found a specialty that really resonated me, which is known as physical medicine and rehabilitation. The American Academy of Physical Medicine and Rehabilitation on their website states that physical medicine and rehabilitation, also known as physiatry or rehabilitation medicine, aims to enhance and restore functional ability and quality of life to those with physical impairments or disabilities affecting the brain, spinal cord, nerves, bones, joints, ligaments, muscles, and tendons. A physician having completed training in this field is referred to as a physiatrist. Unlike other medical specialties that focus on a medical cure, the goals of the physiatrist are to maximize patients' independence in activities of daily living and improve quality of life. Now, this was a description that really resonated with me as I enjoy working with people, helping them improve their overall function and quality of life. Whether that be a patient who had a stroke and wants to hopefully get back to doing regular activities of daily living, to an injured athlete who wants to get back to the field. PM&R specifically has a large focus on the musculoskeletal system. You can even do sports medicine rotations throughout the residency and get experience with ultrasound guided injections, which is why I thought it would be best to prepare me for hopefully doing a sports medicine fellowship in the future. To to complete this path, you must do one year of an internship, which can be an internal medicine, a transitional year, or a surgical internship. Three years of PM&R residency, and then one year of sports medicine fellowship. However, if PM&R is not for you, and you're watching this video after already matching into a specialty, you may still be able to go into sports medicine, as there are actually a number of other routes you can take. The other four pathways to being board certified in sports medicine, including residencies in pediatrics or med peds, which will group as one, internal medicine, emergency medicine, and family medicine. Now, all these specialties have a residency of three years and med peds be an exception, being a four-year residency. Initially, primary care sports medicine was actually started by family physicians that had an interest in the care of athletes. According to the ABMS, the Annual Report and Reference Handbook, sports medicine has been a recognized subspecialty by the American Board of Medical Specialties since 1989. At present, the American Medical Society of Sports Medicine, AMSSM, states that as of 2023, there are 227 accredited sports medicine fellowship programs in the United States. Generally, these fellowship subspecialty programs require one to two years of additional training, and most are generally one year. While I mentioned sports medicine can be achieved through multiple specialties, it is important to note that certain programs have preferences for certain specialties or may only let you apply if you are coming from a specific specialty. For example, there are some sports fellowships that are just for family med residents, other spots that are reserved just for EM residents, and others that are just for PM&R residents. The most popular specialty to pursue sports medicine out of is family medicine, representing 77% of the 2023 match based on data from the National Resident Matching Program, the NRMP. Once finishing fellowship, you must pass the sports medicine board certification exam to be fully board certified. Additionally, sports medicine specialists further add to their expertise by participating in continuing medical education activities and must recertify every 10 years, which is common for most specialties. So you might be asking yourself, what exactly does sports medicine training look like? Well, sports medicine specialists undergo extensive training in musculoskeletal medicine. However, while sports orthopedic surgeons primarily focus on the operative treatment of musculoskeletal injuries, sports medicine specialists specialize in the non-operative medical treatment of 
of these injuries. This represents the great majority of the active population as a large majority of all sports injuries are actually non-surgical. In a study published by the Journal of Athletic Training, approximately 70% of all injuries were treated non-operatively, with the remaining 30% requiring surgical intervention. This study was conducted on NCAA Division I student athletes, and the percentage may vary depending on the level of sport, type of sport, and the individual condition. It's also worth noting that the decision to treat an injury surgically or non-surgically depends on the specific injury, the extent of the damage, and the goals of the patient. In some cases, non-surgical treatments may be unsuccessful, and surgery may be required to achieve the desired outcome. However, even if surgery is required, sports medicine specialists can expedite referral to an orthopedic surgeon. They can help guide referrals to appropriate rehabilitative care and ancillary services when necessary. Common examples of musculoskeletal problems include acute injuries such as ankle and knee sprains, muscle sprains, and shoulder dislocations, overuse injuries such as tendonitis and stress fractures. Sports medicine specialists also receive additional training in the non-MSK aspects of sports medicine. These include mild traumatic brain injuries like concussions, athletes with chronic or acute illnesses such as mono and asthma, nutrition and performance issues, exercise injury prevention, and return to play decisions in the sick and injured athletes. Additionally, contrary to the title, sports medicine specialists are ideal providers for the non-athlete and are excellent resources for the individual who wishes to become active or begin an exercise program. Sports medicine physician typically treats a patient population that includes athletes, active individuals, those who have sustained injuries related to physical activity or sports, but can even treat the elderly with osteoarthritis who just want to reduce their pain and regain function. Patients may range in age from children to older adults and can include individuals of all skill levels from amateur to professional. All right, so you've just matched into residency in a related field and have decided sports medicine is for you. What's next? Well, from speaking with peers in the field, it seems like to prepare for a sports medicine fellowship during residency, you should do whatever you can to gain experience in the evaluation and management of MSK injuries and conditions, try to find sports coverage opportunities, and even get involved with some research if you can. Depending on which program you're at, it may be harder or easier to get certain opportunities, but it generally should be doable. Additionally, I've been told it's important to stay current with the latest research and developments in sports medicine by reading journals, attending conferences and workshops, networking with other sports medicine professionals. And these strategies could really be applied for any type of residency your fellowship. So how competitive is sports medicine? Well, the number of people who match into sports medicine fellowships each year can vary depending on the specific fellowship programs and the number of available spots. According to the National Resident Matching Program, in 2023, there were roughly 458 applicants for 363 positions for sports medicine fellowships across the United States with a match rate of about 79%. If you break it down by residency specialty, family medicine had 335 applicants with 253 matching, which is a rate of 75.5%. PMNR had 56 applicants with 29 matching, a match rate of only 51.8%. Emergency medicine had 19 applicants with 10 matching, rate of 52.6%. And pediatrics had 16 out of their 36 applicants match, which is a match rate of 44%. So as you can see, this is definitely a competitive fellowship to get and desired by many. The lifestyle of a sports medicine doctor can vary depending on the specific type of practice and setting in which you work, although it is primarily an outpatient specialty. Some sports medicine doctors will work for a large academic institution, others will work for large private healthcare conglomerates, and others will join or start their own private practices. In general, time may be spent seeing patients for consultations, performing physical exams, interpreting imaging studies, using ultrasound for diagnostics and therapeutics, developing treatment plans, as well as performing procedures. Some of these procedures include different types of joint injections, such as hyaluronic acid, corticosteroids, and PRP. Also, laceration repairs and nerve blocks are procedures some sports medicine physicians are trained in. Sports medicine doctors who work with athletic teams may also have a demanding schedule that includes traveling to games and events, as well as being on call to treat injured athletes. All in all, becoming a sports medicine physician can be a challenging and rewarding career choice for those who have a passion for sports and athletics and desire to help people. The field of sports medicine is diverse and offers many different specialties that one can pursue it from, which allows physicians to find the area that best suits their interests and skills. In this field, physicians have the opportunity to stay current with the latest research and technology in order to provide the best possible care for their patients. Additionally, sports medicine physicians often work as part of a team that includes coaches, athletic trainers, and other medical professionals, which can be a rewarding aspect of the job. The unique challenge of treating elite athletes, as well as the ability to make a real difference in the lives of the general population of patients by helping them recover from injuries and returning to activities they love, are among the reasons that make sports medicine a fulfilling profession to pursue. If you've enjoyed this video, I'd love for you to subscribe and comment below which medical specialty do you want me to talk about next.